गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन सो हैप्पी टू मीट यू वंस अगेन ओके इन द लास्ट क्लास वी स्टडीड अबाउट सिल्क राइट लाइफ सेकल ऑफ अ सिल्क मोथ ओके इन दैट वी स्टडीड अबाउट द फीमेल मोथ लेस अबाउट थ्री हंड्रेड टू फोर हंड्रेड एक्स एट अ टाइम राइट एंड इन टू वीक्स द लिव एक्स कैच इन टू कैट पिल दिस इज कॉल्ड द larval stage okay you can see the picture this is the larval stage okay and it feeds on mulberry leaves for 3 to 4 weeks okay uh, it is a creates fine filaments from two glands on its head it is made up of protein that hardens when exposed to air okay it deposits filaments in layers around its body through figure of eight movements of the head forming a structure called cocoon okay Uh, so you know that each of them spins a cocoon around itself right uh, it takes 3 to 7 days to prepare the cocoon okay uh, so inside the cocoon the caterpillar changes into the second stage that is called the pupal stage and then finally becomes an adult moth okay this is what we studied in the last class right so that is life cycle of a silk moth okay now next uh, topic let's study about sericulture okay so sericulture means what rearing of silkworm silkworms for silk production is called sericulture okay what is sericulture rearing of silkworms for silk production is called silk uh, sericulture okay here you know that we saw what we studied in the life cycle of a silk moth the same uh, the in the same Uh, almost we'll study about that okay so the healthiest moths are chosen for breeding and laying eggs that you know that right so then the eggs laid by the female moth are collected and stored on stripes of clothes or paper okay for sericulture process the healthiest moths are chosen for breeding and laying eggs okay the eggs laid by the female moth are collected and stored on stripes of clothes or paper okay then the farmers who rear silkworms keep the eggs on a clean place under suitable warm condition and humidity okay so the uh, eggs catch successfully okay then the eggs only catch once in a year during spring okay when the mulberry leaves bear fresh leaves okay so the eggs catch and larva come out uh, then the larva then spread on the clean bamboo trays to grow this is what uh, this is only you are seeing in this picture okay the larva are then spread out on the clean bamboo trays or grow to grow okay they are usually fed chopped mulberry leaves for 20 to 35 days mostly five times per na day around one month okay last uh, like in life cycle we studied the same right so the larva eat day and night and grow in size okay after the larva stops eating at the end of the growth stage they are kept in the rectangular frames or racks and twigs are placed on the trays where the caterpillar spins the cocoons okay Uh, so the spinning of the cocoon takes about 3 to 7 days okay so after that uh, see the same cocoons are collected and put in hot water okay see you can see this picture see this is the first stage okay the cocoons are collected and put in hot water this kills the pupa and loosens the filaments okay so this process is called boiling this process is called boiling okay so the cocoons are collected and put it in hot water okay this kills the pupa and the loosen the filaments okay after that see uh, the filaments are ah uh, see you can see this the filaments are unwind with the help of special machines machines okay the filaments are unwind Uh, are taken out with the help of the special machines this delicate process is called reeling okay this is this is uh, what is this this is reeling or the other name is called filature okay 
so you can say that what is reeling reeling or pillage the filaments are taken out from the cocoons by a process called reeling or pillage okay and the fiber of a single cocoon is to is too fine to handle okay so up to 10 cocoons are woven together to make a strong th thread okay the fiber of a single cocoon is too fine to handle okay so up to 10 cocoons are woven together to make a strong thread that process is called spinning okay this process is called spinning okay now we study uh, boiling reeling and spinning okay uh, then uh, the texture of the fabric depends on the manner of twisting okay uh, so the rock silk thread undergoes a series of process such as rolling washing and twisting before be being woven into a fabric okay so the threads are dyed and woven into silk fiber okay the threads are uh, dyed and woven into silk fiber okay so here we studied about the process of sericulture okay so in the first stage the healthiest most uh, moths are chosen for breeding and laying eggs okay so they will select the uh, good, good breed only so it lays more uh, eggs you know that it lays 300 to 400 eggs at a time okay uh, after that uh, it moves to the second stage that is called the larval stage okay so the lar larva uh, eat uh, more mulberry leaves uh, through 22 35 days more than one month okay so then uh, after this uh, th this is the second stage okay larval stage then uh, you know that uh on the it has the two glands on its head it spins the filaments okay this filaments um it forms the uh, figure of eight movements or of the head okay forming a structure called the cocoon okay then uh, it takes 3 three, uh, three to 7 days to prepare the cocoon okay to prepare the uh, cocoon after this uh, cocoon stage it complete then it moves to the next stage okay uh, that is the in the it uh, in, in in inside the cocoon the caterpillar changes into a second stage that is called the pupal stage okay and then finally uh, becomes an adult moth right so after uh, forming the filaments uh, this x this pupa inside the cocoon Uh, it killed by put it in the hot water okay that i showed in the picture uh, it which kills the uh, worms as well as loosen the filaments okay two process will be happen in that uh, the, uh, this process is called boiling in that it kills the pupa as well as it loosen the filaments okay so that first process is called that is boiling okay then after boiling that Uh, the filaments are unwind or taken out with the help of the special machines okay so this delicate uh, process is called reeling okay here it is given the one end of the silk thread is passed through the an eyelet and the thread reeled on to the beam okay then the fiber of a single cocoon is too fine too fine to handle so up to 10 uh, 10 cocoons are woven together to make a strong thread okay that process is called the uh, spinning okay so according to the texture uh, the texture of the fabric um, depends on the manners of twisting okay so the raw silk thread undergoes rolling washing and twisting before being woven to fabric okay uh, the threads are dyed and woven into the silk fiber okay so this is the process of sericulture okay uh, next let's study about different varieties of silk okay so see um, th there are different varieties of silk moth which feed on different plants okay so they produce silk of different quality and texture okay 
so different varieties of silk moth feed on different plants okay uh, they produce silk of different quality and texture okay the first variety of silk is called tassar or kosa silk tassar or kosa silk okay so it is drawn from cocoons uh, grown on arjun saja and sal trees okay uh, from which trees it will be taken uh, it is drawn from cocoons from uh, arjun saja or sal trees take a note it that and the second variety of silk is called the mugga silk okay that is called the mugga silk okay uh, that is Ah, oh, it is given here, muga silk. Ah, uh, it is uh, it is the products of the silk worm, which feed on soam and salulis. Okay, soam and salulis. Uh, it is found in Brahmaputra Valley. It is not given in the book. Ah, uh, the soam and salu leaves. Ah, uh, ah, uh, please the muga silk. Ah, muga silk. It is found in Brahmaputra Valley. Okay. And the third variety, it is not given in our book. That is called yeri silk. What is the name of that? Yeri silk. Okay. It is the product of the domesticated silk worms that feed mainly on castor leaves. Okay. It eats the castor leaves. Okay. What is the name of the silk? Yeri silk. Okay. And the fourth one is mulberry silk. This already we studied. It is obtained from silk worms. that only feed on mulberry leaves okay it is the best quality silk this is what we studied already right and sometimes uh, artificial silk is uh, sold as the natural silk okay so the difference between the artificial silk and natural uh, can be found out by burning a small piece of fabric okay how we will find that burning of a small piece of fabric okay while burning of a artificial silk uh, it is made up of plant uh, is made of plant fiber it smells like burning paper okay it smells like burning paper if it has synthetic fiber like nylon and polyester it melts and drop okay it leaves behind hard bead like substance okay it it behind Uh, hard bead like substance okay uh, but the natural silk fiber burns with a shooty flame and smells like burning hair okay natural silk fiber burns with a shooty flame and smells like burning hair okay uh, it leaves behind black powder which crumbles easily okay it leaves behind black powder which crumbles easily okay similarly when cotton is burnt it smells like burning paper okay when cotton is burnt it smells like burning paper and it leaves behind ash that crumbles easily okay uh, the wool does not burn easily it burns with a sooty flame and it gives out an odor of uh, the unpleasant odor of the burning hair okay uh, the wool is Uh, does not burn easily it burns with a sooty flame and it gives out an unpleasant odor of the burning hair okay the remaining sub burnt wool is hard okay so uh, this is about the uh, silk wool and cotton okay the next we study about characteristics of silk okay uh, it's not given in, in our book right Uh, so just you can listen that see silk is extremely elastic that already we studied right it is the smoothest and finest of all fiber that is the character okay so the first character it is extremely elastic okay and the second character it is the smoothest and finest of all fiber okay third character it can be dyed easily okay uh, and take the takes the highest luster okay so what is the third character it can be dyed easily okay and the fourth character the silk is the strongest natural fiber we already studied right silk is the strongest natural fiber and can be stretched to almost 25% of its original length okay it can be stretched 
and almost 25 percentage of its original length understand that and the next one is uh, health hazards in sericulture okay health hazards in so health hazards in uh, sericulture means see already we studied in that wool wool also the same health hazards in sericulture uh, wool right so do you remember that so the people uh, when they are working in the wool industry uh, because of the bacteria they get infected and the, so they uh, cause a fatal disease called the anthrax or rls shortest disease right so because they are uh, inhaling the air in the same place right so they used to get the disease shortest disease right and also now but nowadays the people used to, to take the vaccine so they are preventing from themselves uh, from that right so the same uh, let's study in the health hazards in sericulture also okay so the first one is see you know that uh, the the uh, eggs or the uh, silicon that eggs they put it in the hot water right so when they are put in the hot water um, uh, they will the people used to dip their dip their hands in that uh, with uh, with the bare hands they are dipping there uh, so they uh, they used to get the infection from the hot water okay so because of the infection the people used to, to get the blisters uh, and open wounds or injuries in their hands okay so that is the first health hazard okay so handling of dead worms with the bare hands uh, contributes the infection and illness okay and the second one is uh, see the people they are standing a long time to reel the thread silk thread okay so they are getting the backache uh, spine and vision related problems okay mostly they people used to stand 12 to 16 hours a day okay uh, for reeling okay that is the second health hazard and the third one is see uh, the peoples uh, they are inhaling the air in the same place they are so they are it leads to the respiratory disease such as asthma and bronchitis okay so the third uh, hazards uh, health hazard is asthma the people used to, to get the asthma and bronchitis okay and the fourth one is uh, so see uh, it exposes uh, the continuous exposure to the noise made by spinning and winding machines okay uh, so it result the hearing disorders okay first one the people are uh, getting the uh, injury uh, or open wound uh, or blisters okay because of the infection because they are dipping their hands with the bare hands okay so and the second one is the people are standing a long time 12 to 16 hours so that they are getting the backache okay and the third one the people are inhaling the in air in that place so they are getting the asthma and bronchitis okay and the fourth one uh, because of the noise of the machines uh, winding machine or sp uh, spinning machines uh, it result the hearing disorders okay that is the health health hazards in the uh, silk industry okay uh, this is what about uh, the today's portion uh, so students uh, we have completed the lesson fiber to fabric the last week i sent the one word questions and two more questions um, you have to complete the one word questions you can mark it in the book uh, if you don't have the book you can write it in the booklet okay but two more questions you can note down in the booklet and while you are coming for corrections come with that okay and also read the lesson three uh, till the page number 46 okay students thank you